Welcome back to RBR guys, I'm your super powered host Raz and I've just flown into Phoenix in Arizona in the USA to test drive the true flagship of BMW M, the brand new G87 M2. The last M2 though so ingrained in the past of BMW M was actually the first of its name and despite that in a short amount of time it's become the highest selling BMW M ever at over 60,000 units already. And come on, we all love the M2 in all of its iterations, which is a rare thing. We love the characterful N55 original brutish looking car, and we love the S55, which instantly made both the competition and the CS classic. But that's part of the problem, isn't it? That M2 in all of its iterations did become an instant classic. And for this car to follow up those cars, it's an uphill battle in my opinion. And plus with BMW M pushing the envelope in terms of design, it truly is a difficult task for this more expensive car to achieve. Thankfully though, the formula and the starting point is the right one. We've got six cylinders, it's rear wheel drive, and we have the choice of both automatic and the manual transmission. But in my humble opinion, it is still an uphill battle for this car. Can it convince us to pay more versus its brilliant predecessor? Today's the day to find out the first drive of the brand new BMW M2. So guys, today's episode of RBR is once again sponsored by NordVPN. Now you guys somewhat trust me about cars, but I'm also a tech guy and I can't understand in this day and age how you can have any device without having a great VPN client. And NordVPN is amazing at protecting your privacy. It's amazing at getting you the content that you want on your devices and keeps you safe just generally online. Case in point today, we're off to the USA in order to test both the XM and the M2. I'm gonna be using Wi-Fi points on the plane, all over Arizona while we're out there as well. But it's so easy for a malicious attacker to set up guest Wi-Fi points just anywhere. And I could be doing banking transactions, I could be doing personal emails, business emails, and that's my data gone. Whereas to protect yourself, all it takes is one click. And that is it. You're protected, your data's protected. You can leave auto protect on and it'll protect you from malicious websites and trackers as well. Don't worry about speed either because Nord has been tested as the fastest VPN app out there. Anyway, I've got it on all of my devices, on iPhone, on Mac. You can even have it on Android TV. Why TV? Because you can change the region that you're on and then access content from different parts of the world. Well, like when I'm traveling, I can still watch my content from back in the UK without the library getting disturbed abroad. So like I said, how can you do without it? And as an RBR viewer, you won't just use the code RBR or go to nordvpn.com forward slash RBR or just use the code RBR. It's simple. You'll get a great discount as shown below. Big thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to that car. So you guys know better than me why the M2 is so important to us. It's our modern 2002, it's our modern E30, 1M. It's that pure, small BMW coupe with the right formula. Six cylinders, rear wheel drive, small, brutish looks and agility. Small enough to butt heads with a Cayman and agile and fast enough to slap an M4 in the face. And the new car really is all new. It uses no parts from its predecessor, rather bringing back that M4 it wholesale strips that car for all the parts that it thinks it needs. For example, first, the S58 inline six twin turbo engine from both the M4 and in fact, unchanged from the race cars. This is a great engine. 3D printed, lightweight crankshaft, forged pistons. It's a high torque, high revving engine with 550 Newton meters in this car, 460 brake horsepower, 90 more than the original M2, 10 more than even the CS. That's a great starting point. That is then linked to either your eight speed or the six speed manual as an option. As standard, we've got the M active diff on the rear. We've got M specific steering with modes. Our braking system again shared with M3 and M4. Here it's a 380 disc with six piston caliper on the front, so nice and big. And you've got the integrated braking system again with modes that you can configure. You've got the M exhaust system with multiple flaps. And then finally, M adaptive suspension so much changed here and so much taken from M3 and M4. First of all, we've got a lot of rigidity measures. So we've got this brace across our two spring struts on the top, connecting those and our front bulkhead. This, of course, specifically made for the M2. 
and it takes so much more from M3 and M4, particularly with regards to rigidity measures. So we've got that massive aluminum shear panel that goes across the bottom of the car. We've got a three-piece one on the rear of the car. We've got loads of struts and braces to make the car more rigid. What's really interesting to me is the width of this car because it is actually the same track width, identical to the M4. So we're using the same front and rear axles. It's the same width as the M4 but it's so much wider than the standard two series. Although the track width is the same as the M4, the car is 21 centimeters shorter. So you've got a shorter, more bullish car, more kind of go-kart looks in terms of the wheels being on the corners, but it's shorter, but the same width. I love that. And that's why it looks so good. Now the design I actually love, and I came across the design sketches that they made for this car. And it's actually quite interesting. I'm not sure if anyone else has ever shown you this, but you look at these sketches and you see the way that they were playing with some of the retro elements of uh, badge position, how they were going to play with the exhaust. Maybe they'll do it in the future. And that overall final look, this is what I kind of appreciate about the stance of the car. And I think it's what over time we are going to end up loving about it. I think it will be an instant classic in terms of its design at the moment. Yes, it's weirding it, us out, but I think it's the old Chris Bangle thing of, when it's far and long enough, we're gonna really appreciate it, particularly the rear. I think the rear is awesome. I, I just love the way it looks. The first thing I thought when I saw it was fighter jet, and I still think that now. Um, we're gonna have to play with some BMW M parts in minutes, so stick around for that. But I love the squareness of the rear. I think the exhaust position with them being closer to the middle looks really good. The lights don't offend me as they do in the normal two series. I love the flared wheel arches. The front and the sides, again, nice and wide. I love the front end, the fact that it hasn't got any kind of surround around the grill. You just have the pure, the raw grill itself and then body. I like that. I think it looks great. And the fact that they've done the light as a different shape to the standard two, having its own little black cutout, all of that works for me. So let's see if I'm right in the future. Let's see if it's a future classic. Now, there are other options that you can get in this car. We've got quite a basic spec M2 today, which is nice because in the future we'll try one which is much higher spec. In here, we haven't got, for example, the optional carbon fiber roof, which reduces the weight by 6 kg. We also haven't got the full M carbon bucket seats here. We have the standard ones. Those again, reduce the weight of the car. You've got the standard wheels here, which are bicolor finished in silver and black. You can have the full on black ones or some really nice M performance ones that I'll show you in a minute. As you heard, a lot of these things affect the weight of the car. The actual weight of the car, almost identical to the M3, okay? Now for an M2, that's kind of worrying, right? Because you want this to be lighter. You want it to be more dynamic. How's it gonna feel on the road? We will have to see. Now the final bit on specking this car is M performance parts, okay? We have to talk about M performance parts. Let me first show you every single part, then I'll show you how I think I would spec it. So guys, here we have the M2 with all of the performance parts, which I'm sure you've seen thousands of times already on social media. But A, I wanted to show you each part close up because there's 28 different ones, 29 if you count my M Town shirt. But I also want to show you the configuration that I think would work if you make just a few choices out of these, not all of them. And I'll show you that after this segment. So first, let's come in close. Let me show you because there is loads of parts and there's a lot of carbon. There's a lot of details here. Let's start with, I think, the air intakes, which are very much motorsport influenced they've got this cross section and it's all in carbon fiber, which is a distinct difference. If we look to the standard M2 here, where you see that black part just ends around there and it's like a straighter line. So big difference there. Notice that there's no lower splitter here compared to that one, where you have this massive air curtain on the side, all in carbon that begins here, goes all the way around the bottom across the side there. And that's actually quite impressive looking. I don't mind that as much. Um, I think these two parts work quite nicely. This I'm not sure about. It looks nice and, you know, it's very kind of tracked and you've got the M logo there, which ain't bad, is it? But I don't know. Why would you want that on a daily car? It doesn't really make sense to me. Then by far my favourite bits of the M performance parts, which have to be the new centre locking wheels, which look incredible. Look at those. Very similar to the designs that we've had in the past with the M3 and the M4 with, you know, the holes within the spokes. But as you can see here, the centre locking with this awesome new design that they're also rolling out on XM, which is an all black BMW graphic for the centre lock area. I love that. That looks great. It says M Performance here. These ones are in 1920 staggered setup. There is a bigger set of M Performance alloys that you can get, which are 2021s, I believe, as well, also staggered. But yeah, these look really good. Then you've also got, look, the little M valve caps in here. Can you see that? It's actually quite nice. 
like that. There's another detail inside actually, which is quite similar. Then you've got these, which I call the Wolverine claws, which are not as cool as Wolverine, sadly, not in my opinion anyway. They don't do anything and they're just a, you know, a carbon add-on. And again, on this side as well, not sure if that really adds anything to the car. Personally, I would do without those. This is not too bad. This is a bit reminiscent of the old M performance part we used to have on the M2. So again, a more exaggerated air curtain along the side here. Again, does it have a massive effect on aerodynamics or is it there just for show? Probably the latter. In here though, we've got something really cool. Let me show you this. This is the carbon M performance fuel cap and it just adds a level of sexiness to this car that really every M2 could do with, right? Now the rear, stick with me on this. I actually like quite a few things on here. Firstly, the boot spoiler, which reminds me of the CSL homage concept and the new three litre CSL that they're making, but in a car that we can all actually afford. If this was body colored, I think it would look fantastic. Wait for my renderer that I'm gonna show you in a couple of seconds. Then we've got the roof spoiler as well, which I also think complements that nicely. Again, no massive aerodynamic effects, so it's really there just if you like that M heritage element. At the bottom, more carbon fiber, just bits tacked on like this. Yes, it breaks up the color of a car if you want to kind of reduce that element and you're not happy with it, but do you really need it? Not really. And of course, the M Performance exhaust. These sound really good from what we saw in the M3 and the M4. It'll probably sound really good in this, but it's whether you can stomach this. I don't know. Can you? Tell me in the comments. You can also waste more of your money on a carbon fiber radio cover. You've got your carbon fiber mirror covers. And then finally, inside, there is one thing I really like, which is the M Performance steering wheel. It's a little bit more contoured than the normal one. I like the look of that. Then you've got the M Performance armrest. You've got some carbon on your door sills and the matte carbon fiber, which I'm not really sold on. But the steering wheel, very, very nice. So guys, that's each part individually. Now I'm gonna choose the ones that I really like and that I think would suit a decent, classy configuration of M2. And let's see what that looks like. So guys, those are your M Performance parts. The way I would do this, this is how I would do it. Of course, we're not doing the exhaust. We're not doing the, wol the Wolverine claws either. And I think the extra carbon trims on the rear, eh, don't need them. What would look nice, I think, that would match kind of the look of the homage concept, which I think this car is geared towards, is the roof spoiler and the boot spoiler. And even if they were body color, they actually might look even better, perhaps. I think you should go for the M Performance wheels, which are bigger, 20 and 21, or the center locking wheel, which look fantastic. And on the front, I think you can get away with getting the carbon air intakes and the carbon lower splitter, which is nice. Can you get away with the side bit? I'm not sure. It's quite exaggerated, maybe, maybe not, but that's kind of a classy way of doing the M Performance parts. Let me know what you guys think as well. So that's the exterior of our M2 and the technology. Let's have a quick look now inside the car where it's so much more grown up compared to its predecessor. And again, stealing wholesale from our M4 before we go out and finally see what this car is like to drive. So guys, I made a bit of a scene when I came here that Mr. AMG wearing a M-Town branded shirt. Sign of the times these days, AMG customers flocking over to BMW M. A lot because of cars like this really, you know, cars that are true to their identity. The M2 with its six cylinders, rear wheel drive, auto and manual available. It's just a great car. And then look at the added benefit. Yes, you're paying more in this car. Yes, it's more expensive than the predecessor, but the predecessor's interior, you know, it's like trying to compare a one-star hotel to a five-star hotel. It's just incomparable. That car was very much based on one series. This strips everything out of four series. And in fact, if you compare this back to back to eight series, just a better looking car on the inside. Um, you've got basically the same amount of space as you do in the four as well. Really what you end up with is a stockier car with almost, in terms of the mod cons that a sports car driver cares about, this car has it. Like BMW operating system eight, which I'll get onto in a minute. You know, excellent choice in the seats available here from the standard ones all the way to the carbon bucket seats. Of course, loads of carbon fiber everywhere. You've got the exact same drive unit as you find in M3 and M4 as well with a nice shift toggle here. Unlike the LCI uh, three series with this horrible little knob thing that I'll keep talking about till the end of time. We don't want that in M cars. We want proper shifters, which BMW M are giving us. So you've got your M mode button here, setup, exhaust button, etc., all linking to operating system eight. In the rear, lots of space in the rear actually. I'll show you that. All right, kids, let's get in. See if I can manage to, I'm not used to getting in the back of cars like this. Oh, all right. 
It's not my proudest moment, but that's not bad. Okay, head's touching roof, but like, if I close that, sorry, Jamie. That's not bad. I mean, you know, it's four series equipment. Okay, stop, stop. That's tight, <laughs> but it, it's okay. It's kind of four series equivalent. It's not terrible. Um, kids are gonna be happy. Adults, short journeys, but nothing like 911 or anything like that. You're thinking kind of a bit less than four series, C-cast, that kind of thing. It's okay, and it's, it's nicely trimmed. You know, everything's still high quality in the back like it is in the front, which is nice. I would prefer more buttons for things like climate control, but this is the way they're going with operating system eight. So, you know, you always have your zero layer of your climate control at the bottom here, and then everything else in terms of seat heating, etc. you've got to kind of dive into the system for. I'm not a fan of that. I would have just have preferred more buttons as we used to have the shortcut buttons here, etc. And you've got space for it. I don't see why we just, we just don't do it. I love the door cards with the M graphic, you know, sitting within here. That looks really nice. And it just looks like such a sporting interior. I'm not a massive fan of the steering wheel. It's going to change, I'm sure, going into the future um, with the newer cars. We've seen spy shots of a better looking steering wheel. But this is okay. You've got the lovely carbon shift paddles. You've got the M1 and M2 button, and it all kind of falls into the background when you start driving these fantastic cars. Now, this car, in fact, has our sunroof. Now, this is a little bit beneficial. If you're looking for a, you know, a 6 kg heavier car, who gives a shit, really? Um, and to light, let in a bit more light, then the sunroof option is the one to do. Otherwise, get the carbon roof. But it's nice that we were able to see this in person. It lets in a lot of light. And I imagine your rear passengers will probably prefer that option if you're using this car a lot as a daily. Now, let's have a look inside operating system eight. It's chock full, in fact, of BMW MDNA, which is lovely. They finally upgraded their digital systems to be on par, if not better than the competitors. And let me show you in what way. So, operating system, mate, you've got the lovely big curved display in here, as you can see. And to have that in a two series, which is basically identical to your LCI three and four and, you know, seven series, IX, XM, etc. That's great. It's great value, isn't it? Now, that's not what I'm interested in them to. It needs to look sporty. This does look inherently sporty. You've got the lovely M graphic there, the door handles, the shape, everything is kind of driver focused, that typical eight degree angle of all of this shifting towards you. Your drive select unit here, everything accessible as you need it for the driver. It's all driver focused. It's great. Steering wheel, carbon paddles, M1, M2, nice. Digital screen, let me show you. First, pop the car on. So now with the car on, let's focus on our front driver zone first. That is your standard looking screen. Still very M focused. One thing I really wanted to show you guys was the fonts, okay? Because the fonts that they've used here, look at, for example, the two there, it's identical to our M2 badge on the rear. All of those fonts, zero to eight, all what you would find on BMW M cars on their badges. So the fonts that they're using are BMW M fonts, which is great. Then of course, you've got the actual shapes and the graphics themselves all matching BMW M. If I go into M mode and we switch here into sport, see the lovely animation change. And again, how BMW M is this? It looks fantastic, doesn't it? All the shapes, we've got lap timer, we've got trip data with the M2 showing in there. You've got a full map you can have in there, your setup menu, engine, tires is the best one because look what's there. I've shown you this before. That's the BMW M1. They could have put the M2 there, they didn't. Instead, they relied on their heritage, which is fantastic. This car also has the heads-up display. So we can change our content in the heads-up display to navigation or simple data. And when we change our M mode, it actually changes again the content that you see within the heads-up display. So you get like kind of more sporty. Here we've got the rev limiter showing here so that we don't need to look down to see when we're changing gears. So great driver zone there. And again, operating system eight here in terms of the actual system. Again, very, very BMW M with the shapes. Very easy to use, nice big touch points. You see your own car in there as well, which looks great. When you go into the setup menu, you can configure the car exactly as you want it for both M1 and M2, all done in the setup menu here. Very easy to configure and use. And then you can put any type of widgets that you want here, like we've got M setup menu, you've got your tire info with the M1 there, and you can add widgets of your own liking as well. So basically we've got almost all of them here, but the point is you can customize this exactly as you want it.
So, excellent system. Now one final thing, let's hear what the M2 sounds like when you turn it on. Now let's first set the car into M2, so we get the sport start up and turn it on. No rev limiter in this car. Now the key to this car, as with any M2, is, is it an agile, quick little brute? It needs to be, it can't be an M3, M4 clone. Let's see if BMW M have nailed this. Okay kids, I'm, I'm giddy about this. It's all good and well reading about cars, etc. but a car like this is all about the drive. And to drive the new M2, I've been waiting for this, I've been looking forward to this. We've got beautiful weather, Perfect country to be doing this in. First thing as you begin is just, oh, the steering. Everything, just the, the braking, the body control, the pointability of the nose, the grip from the rear end and its kind of playfulness. Mate, what have these guys done with this? This is, this is fun. It's actually quite reminiscent of um, my M2 CS in the best of ways. The thing about the M2 and all of its iterations previously is it always felt like a little go-kart because the wheels were kind of on the corner, a very low down car. This one's lower than that one, as you know, you know, and it just felt like a really nimble little car on its feet. And in the first hundred yards, that's the impression that you get from this. I thought coming into it, given how much it had taken from M3 and M4, that immediately it was going to feel like those cars. It does a little bit. Certainly in terms of power delivery, etc. Obviously we've got the same engine, same gearbox, etc. But in terms of the way that the car feels and sits on the road, it feels like a different animal. And that is the best first result that we could ask for. Speed is good immediately. It's not as torquey as our M3 and M4. I can feel that immediately. It hasn't got that pull. You kind of need to be in the right rev range. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, what I love about the M2 is how controllable its power is. 550 newton meters, 460 brake horsepower. These are figures where you can enjoy the car's entire breadth of ability quite easily day to day. All right, now these are the type of roads where the M2 excels. Short twisty bends. Let's see what the car is made of here. Oh, the steering is beautiful. It's better than M3 and M4, definitely. It really gives you a good idea of where the wheels are and that lovely go-kart feeling that we had in the previous car. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of my CS in that way. A car like this needs to give you confidence. And steering is that first really important marker. It's got to give you the feedback in the right amount of time. That's what was great about both the rear-wheel drive M3 and in fact the X-Drive for the first time. A good X-Drive BMW with great steering. This is even better than those cars in terms of steering feel. One thing that really hits me about this car is how different it feels to the 240i. You know, still a two series, the interior looks kind of familiar, etc. but it's a totally different animal. The way that it sits on the road, the power delivery, the gearbox, the pliability of the rear, it's just in another league and that's exactly what you want the M2 to be. And it's no surprise considering the internals that we have in this car. It very much feels like a daily car though, much like the 240i was so good at crunching miles. I can see the M2 doing the same thing. I'm in sports suspension at the moment, and yes, you know, very much sports car. I do feel the road, you know, and you kind of expect that with the proper M adaptive suspension. It's very much like M3 and M4, but I'm, you know, I'm not opposed to that. Because it's adaptive, it's gonna make up for any inconsistencies in the road better than, you know, sports cars of the past. Um, certainly it's predecessor. It'll be more like the M2 CS was, and the M2 CS was brilliant as a daily, despite being, you know, the most sporty of the M2 variants. Speed-wise, it's a great engine, we know that. Yes, it's slightly underpowered versus M3 and M4, but it's got that usable power, like I said, and it never feels slow. And sometimes, if you're used to X-Drive M3, then yeah, you know, it hasn't got that immediate punch of power that that car affords you, plus it's down on horsepower. Of course, we still have room for a competition in the M2, which is fine, but it's that perfect amount that you're going to enjoy the full breadth of ability of this car every single day. I love this amount of horsepower, you know, 450, 
under 500 is. For this size of car, perfect. Particularly in Sport Plus, it feels really quick. And for this size of car, I think, on some B roads and some twisties, this is gonna be immensely fun. And the key thing I keep coming back to is that it feels different to M3 and M4. That was my biggest worry. That as good as this car is, would you just upscale because it sounds so similar, but it's really not. Now, the other thing I was worried about in this car, the last M2 was the last DCT that we had. This one is the 8 speed torque converter. It's been okay in the M3 and M4, probably best in the M4 CSL. Let's see if this one can listen to my commands any better. Upshifts are pretty decent. A little bit of lag, as you can see there. Let's try a downshift. Fairly instantaneous, actually, not bad. Let's go up again. Yeah, fairly instant. It's the downshifts, though, that were always problematic. It's still got that tiny lag. It's not quite as, you know, on the ball as the DCT is. It's certainly not off-putting. With the M3 Touring, I was almost thinking I'd kind of leave it to its devices. Whereas this, it's, it's pretty instantaneous. It's pretty good. I wonder if it's got totally different software to the M3 and the M4. I suspect that it does. Now, of course, weight is a topic. Weight along with body control of this car. It feels nimble. I don't know what else to say. It hides the weight really well. The M3 is nimble on its feet as well, but it does feel, you know, like a super saloon. It feels kind of its weight in the modern age. This car feels lighter than that. It just does. It's just a fact. It's that much more exciting to drive fast. It just really gives you the feeling of a smaller, more agile car. You will simply just have more fun with this when you're driving on some twisty roads. It's, it's just a fact. I'm really surprised that they were able to differentiate this car so much compared to the M3. I just wasn't expecting it. I should have, but I didn't. Come into the corner, brake hard, get the nose in, turn. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so maneuverable. The more you drive it now, I'm getting into a flow of things now. Mate, you guys are gonna love this car. Now, of course, the other topic here is sound. We've got the same engine as the M3 and M4. This is, of course, a US car. It probably sounds a bit louder than our European ones, but honestly, not that different to the M3 Touring I tested in the UK recently, which was, of course, a Euro spec car, so nice. Now, of course, it's got the right engine. It's got a six cylinder. Yes, it might be, you know, restricted a little bit in sound because of regulations as they are these days, but we know you can get a nice exhaust from Remus etc. You know, like I did on my M2 CS as well, which helped so much when I had the Akrapovich exhaust. You can do that on this. You'll get, you know, slightly better tune of exhaust. But as it is, it sounds quite nice. I'm sure you guys can see. You know, it's a good sounding six cylinder BMW M car. And over on you get a few like burbles, just telling you it's a powerful engine. Nothing kind of obtrusive, nothing too in your face like fake bangs and stuff. And then of course you can rev it out. And it sounds good when it gets to higher revs, which you know isn't always the case these days. It's nice that you can take it out of M2 mode and then it's you know a pretty compliant cruiser with lots of technology, etc. But then you take it into M2 and it becomes you know one of the most exciting M cars that you can drive today. Look, undoubtedly, a UK drive is still in order to really put it through its paces, live with it, see what it's like as a daily. But <laughs> so far, geez, this car is so fun. And that's the key with M2, isn't it? The way that it's always differentiated itself from M3 and M4 is fun. It's pure fun. It's the fact that it's rear wheel drive. It's got a six cylinder engine but it's the most nimble and exciting dynamic M car that they make. Whether they like it or not, it is the flagship. It's the one that everybody will want and the sales figures prove it. And I think this one, I think is gonna knock it even further out of the park with an interior that's a class or two above and dynamics that can frankly shame most cars in the class above too. I think my takeaway from this car is that it's just hugely fun to drive as soon as you get anywhere near any twisty roads, more so than M3 and M4. And it's just a better coupe than the M4 is. It's the type of car you kind of, you go out and you look for roads to conquer. And my takeaway from this is that I really want one. I keep saying that about BMW M's these days. It's really frustrating. 
I'm wearing the bloody shirt but they're nailing it with the identity of their cars. They're making such fantastic vehicles that it's hard not to pine after them. And it's that one car you point to and say, see that, that is BMW M in a nutshell. And I really, really love it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. See you next time on RBR.